Hey guys, it's Christine and T with To The Q. This week, I know you've probably heard about the new um, Netflix show, I think it's been out about a week now, um, called Seven Seconds. So what we're going to attempt to do in this episode is to give you seven minutes of commentary. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> on the shows, on the Netflix show, Seven Seconds. So I'm gonna read you read to you what it's about, and then we'll talk about some of the things that we've noticed or things that kind of like we were able to pull out of it. So, um, when 15 year old black cyclist Brenton Butler dies in a hit and run accident with a white police officer behind the wheel of the vehicle, Jersey City explodes with racial tension. This crime drama explode. Uh, sorry, this crime drama explores the aftermath of the accident which includes an attempted cover-up by the police department and a volatile trial. Assistant prosecutor KJ wants to prosecute the hit and run as a hate crime in addition to a negligent homicide. The longer the case drags out on without a resolution, the more tense the situation becomes. And uh, the, I guess the, the lead character in this is the Emmy winning um, actress, Regina King, who stars as Brenton's uh, church going mother Latrice um, so the cast of characters we have is Latrice his mom um, Isaiah his dad very much involved in the church his um, uncle Seth has just come back from I think a tour in overseas um, he's with the Air Force I think, I think with the Air Force um, and they have a very close relationship um, KJ, as we said, was the assistant prosecutor um, on the case to try and get justice for Brenton. Um, and the uh, cover-up is done by four police officers um, in the narcotics unit of the Jersey City Police Department. One of which is the new guy, um, who is the one who's actually behind the wheel. And the other three... Pete. Pete is behind the wheel, and the other three try and cover it up. Um, the ringleader basically being the leader of the narcotics department. His name is D'Angelo, and he's a SOB um, in all respects of the word. Um, so, so the episode, the first episode, the pilot episode, um, the show pretty much starts out how you would expect the scene of the crime, the cover up. Um, it, it very well, it touched on, you already saw who did it, basically. It wasn't right. a whodunit type of show. We knew who did it. The show really built on the intensity of the emotions, basically, mm -hmm. behind everyone involved. So it was the guilt from the police officer's side, the cover up for the police officers who may have been dirty or who were dirty. Um, the family, the grieving family, the, um... What is it? The prosecutor, not the prosecutor, but the 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 DA. So the district attorney, who basically has her own trouble past, um, as well as the new internal affairs officer of sorts, who also covered a lot of the things. So it was a bunch of. It was really a show about emotions more so than a show about a who done it, and it was still compelling the entire show. Right, and it's a it's. Um, sadly, a typical story in which there is uh, a crime committed against a young black um, kid and um, this time by the police. So there's a definite cover up and they think they're going to get away with it. However, this troubled attorney, she she's a mess, um, alcoholic, um, sleeping around. She's trying to cope with uh, crimes of her past. Uh, her father is very much in the uh, legal arena and so she has this pressure um, to kind of like perform and do well and you know he's like oh this case is never gonna win and she's like you know she's trying to like do the best that she can but she struggles with you know past failures and um, trying to get justice for this guy um, who of course the media portrays as a gangbanger pulls up his one um, uh, arrest record which should have been sealed because he was a minor with two joints um, to kind of, kind of gloss over the fact that he 
got killed. He was a hit and run victim and he was, he could have survived. That was the biggest thing. He could have survived. He was out on the snow for 12 hours. And if somebody had just said something, there was, so there was only one witness to this crime. Um, and that placed all four officers there at the scene of the crime. However, she was a 14 year old, uh, prep school junkie. And, um, you see throughout the course of this show how now that the cops know how they kind of go further into the collusion to even cover up the um the the witness statement or try to keep the witness off the stand um it's it becomes a sad mess um what you got to say Terrence <laughs> yeah i mean it was pretty much a sad roller coaster to that whole point. And those of us who either seen it firsthand or witnessed it in news constantly, we kind of saw where it was going. Um, and that, I don't know, I feel like we knew where this roller coaster was going. Right. So other people who may have been watching it may not have. May have been at the edge of their seats. Yeah. But this story has kind of been told over and over again in real life. So it moved from being a drama to more of a documentary of what has happened and what Basically. continues to happen. Um, so with that, we're not going to, I guess, give away exactly the ending, but, um, from our expressions, you can kind of tell that, you know, exactly. Yeah. So I guess that's it. I guess we kind of did seven minutes on seven seconds. Um, of course there's so much more, that we were able to pull out of this. Um, so if you want to hear the rest, um, you can catch us on to the Q podcast um, on iTunes, on Google Player, on Podcast Player, Google Play, Podcast Player, Overcast, Pocket Cast, um, Pocket Cast everywhere that you listen to podcasts, the main outlets, you can find us to the Q, three exclamation points. And we'll definitely go in deeper on episode six um of to the Q podcast so thanks for listening thanks for tuning in um seven minutes seven minutes on seven seconds eight